One of the biggest features of Titania Backup Pro would have to be Dropbox and the batch restoring. I covered this in the last video, but on the free version, you restore each app one at a time. On the pro version, you click run, and that's it. One button, and your whole phone's back the way it was. Another thing would be the Dropbox that I was talking about. One second, I have to sign into my account. It's going to go through, and it's going to upload only what has changed. So instead of uploading, you know, 100 or more megabytes, it's only uploading 48. The upload has finished. Basically, the benefits of this is if your SD card ever crashes, normally you would lose everything that you had been backing up, which could be some very important stuff, or if someone steals your phone and your SD card is in it, or you accidentally format your SD card. With Dropbox, you'll be able to restore everything on a new SD card or a new phone, and you do not have to worry about it. The Nexus S4G is a really good example. It has built-in memory, and when you unlock the bootloader, it wipes it clean. Every time it wipes it clean, you will be able to download to Titanium Backup, download Dropbox, and have everything downloaded back to your internal memory. So you'll never have to worry about losing anything. And on this phone, I can have it download everything that that phone just uploaded. Watch. Okay, I logged into my Dropbox. It should start downloading stuff instead of uploading what's in there. This is after a clean wipe of the phone. There is absolutely nothing stored on the SD card. Okay, now the Motorola Click sees that everything is on the SD card and you can just start restoring stuff that you lost from before. All this stuff right here with lines through it means it's not on the phone but it's on the SD card. You can either start restoring things one by one, or you can do a batch operation, restore missing apps with data, and then go through and choose all the ones you want to restore and hit run batch operation. And if you have the pro version, it'll start doing everything automatically without you touching anything. If you have the free version, then you'll have to install each one one by one. And if you have the free version, you don't have Dropbox anyway, so don't worry about it. You can also set it towards it doesn't just keep one backup. Menu, preferences, backup history. I set mine to two just in case I back something up and I need to go back to what I had backed up earlier and restore that instead of the newer one. So on Angry Birds you'll notice I have two backups. If I did something really awesome and I don't ever want to lose that I can press on it and protect this backup and now it frees up an additional slot. I have three right now and I only set it towards two because this one's protected and it doesn't waste one of your spots. You can unprotect it or you can restore it. Just the data because the app's already there. Or the app and the data if you haven't done this yet. You just saw that we took everything from Dropbox, put it on the SD card, and now we're able to restore everything that we need to restore. Menu. Batch. Verify all of your backups. We need to get rid of this filter. Sorry. It's going to go through and it's going to make sure that everything is fine. And if it does find something that's corrupted, you could click on it and quickly delete it. Okay, it's just about done. This process would be a whole lot faster on my Evo, of course. It did not find any errors, so all my backups are just fine. I'm going to delete Angry Birds because it's a system app so it won't let me my bad and uninstall ad free now to get them back it's as simple as going to menu batch restore missing apps with data ad free and Angry Birds are not installed run and it wants my code. You do not have to put this in whenever you're doing backups, otherwise it would be very annoying. You only got to put it in when you're doing restores. I'm going to show you a really neat feature called freeze. You can freeze apps so that they're still installed, but the phone does not see it as installed. It will not run anymore. You'll notice that my market is going to crash every single time I launch it. And I'm running RC1 and I've tried nightlies and it still crashes every single time. So I did find a workaround. Manage applications, market, uninstall updates. Now when I go to Titania Backup, 
search for market apply and you'll see this market updater app this app is designed to update your market whenever there's updates obviously the updates are broken so we don't want it doing that anymore freeze this app will not run anymore but it's still installed the phone will not see it as installed either you'll have to defrost it for that to come back now when I load the market it works I will not get force closes and the market updater app will not try to update the market anymore because it's frozen now that's pretty freaking awesome if you ask me I do not recommend using a task killer at all if you're gonna use anything use a task manager you do not want to kill apps because of the simple fact that it's killing useful apps that Android's just gonna relaunch therefore making your battery life even worse or it's gonna kill an app that doesn't start back up and then when it calls for that app it's not gonna work right You'll notice I have a lot of things running. Kill selected apps, launch it again, and you'll see that ADW Launcher EX, beautiful widgets, all these started right back up. And I'll do it again. I'm going to use beautiful widgets as an example. We'll open Titanium back up. If I freeze it, And I go back here, it's not there anymore. Same thing goes with Google Plus. Freeze Google Plus. Went up in my task killer. Google Plus isn't there anymore. It's frozen. It's not going to run. Same thing goes with DSU Manager, Lookout, Market, Titanium Backup, Wi-Fi Tether, ADW Launcher, all these. Anytime you click the Kill All, they're just going to restart right back up. Then when I go to Titanium Backup, it's blue. I'll defrost it. Now it'll run again. I'll also do the same thing to Beautiful Widgets. Task Killer, Google Plus is showing back up and so is Beautiful Widgets. So for you that do use Task Killer because you swear it helps out, when it doesn't, Titanium Backup will make it life even better for you because you won't see it running again and again and again after killing it again and again and again. If your device is S on instead of S off, and I'll show you how to tell, you go to the bootloader, which is volume down and power until you see a white screen. And to the top, mine is S off. If you see S on, any changes you make to your ROM will revert back when you reboot. Titania Backup Pro has a feature where when you have S on, it will automatically uninstall the apps you tell it to. Menu, Filters, Create Label, HTC, and then Menu, Preferences, Bloatware Melter, melt level HTC and when you reboot it'll start uninstalling everything with the label HTC on it I have S on so anything I, I uninstall here sticks it does not reinstall itself after a reboot if you have kids you're really going to love this feature Angry Birds you've gotten as far as you can go and you want to keep improving and getting further but then your kid wants to use your phone and you don't want them to mess up your game save that's easy create a new one this one's gonna be Josh and I'm going to create one for my wife called Amy. Now you have to assign the app you want to work with this. Enable multiple profiles for this app. And it's going to currently assign it to the one you're using now, which is Josh. When I launch Angry Birds, it's my profile. I've gotten all the way to here and I've made a lot of progress as you see. I can switch it to Amy and then open Angry Birds and you'll see that they're locked. That was a fail. Alright, so I got to level 2. When I do this again, I can choose my name, 
Open Angry Birds again. And I can continue where I left off at. And then when it's their turn to play, they click on their name. And they go right back to where they were with their progress. Like I said, this is freaking awesome if you got kids or you have multiple people using one phone. My camera sucks and I know you weren't able to see that, so that's why I'm zoomed in right up on it. And you can keep creating profiles. You have to open up Titanium Backup and click Switch Profile and create a new one and name it whatever you want to name it. Or you can delete them. And remember, you have to go to the app that you want to use it with, long press on it, and enable multiple profiles. And then each app that has multiple profiles enabled, you'll be able to switch back and forth between yours and somebody else's very easily. You can go to an app that you install from the market, long press on it, view market and information, and it tells you everything about the app. It tells you whether it's cost anything, if it's free, and then you can click view and market, and it'll take you to the listing in the market. Have you ever installed an app from your SD card and it just would not show up in the market for a few days? I'm going to provide you an example, Angry Birds. I have it on my phone, I can play it, it's there. When I go to the market and I go to my apps, I do not see Angry Birds in here, anywhere. See, it doesn't even see this installed on my phone. A way to fix that is an awesome feature from Titanium Backup Pro. Market Tools, Market Doctor, User Apps, and System Apps. It found 82 things that were not showing up in the market before but now they should. And another thing I'm going to touch on real quick is the market auto updates. When you install an app, you see that little box that says allow automatic updating? Well, you can go to market tools, market auto updates, and see some of these aren't set to automatically update. So all I'll have to do is click select all, save auto updates configuration, and now every app will automatically update in the market when there's an update available. And that's only in the pro version. When you convert apps to system apps, It does modify your ROM, so you need to have S on, otherwise any changes you made will revert back. And of course, as always, making a backup beforehand is always highly recommended. 626 megabytes of system ROM and 865 of internal space for user apps. I've sorted it by which apps using the most space, and you'll see that it's Netflix is using 7.94 megabytes plus 20.5. So when I convert this to a system app, I took away from my system ROM memory and gave my internal memory some free space. I started out with 626 megabytes free of system ROM and 865 megabytes free of internal. Now I have 904 megabytes free of internal and 618 of system. So it did move the Netflix from the internal memory to the system ROM and freed up precious space which was about 40 megabytes worth of stuff. Pretty crazy. I'm sure when you're installing a ROM and you're doing things, people are like, clear your Dalvik cache. This is something you can do with Titanium Backup Pro. Menu, more, clean Dalvik cache. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to demo it, but when it finds it, it deletes it, and you're done. And unlike a typical way of doing it it takes a really long time for your phone to boot up not this way something I didn't mention is it's not a full cache wipe it only deletes the useless stuff and since the useful contents of Dalvik cache are not deleted the next reboot will be as fast as ever so you save twice as much time do you want to protect your backups that's not a problem menu preferences enable encryption backup protection settings create master key Mine's going to be my username. Now when I try to restore something, restore at plus data. Now it wants my passcode. 
and it restored it. If I did not know that code, I would not be able to restore it. It's very convenient for keeping your data private. I won't be able to demo this too much, but say you have a notepad installed and you have notes in there. You can long press on it, explore, and it says tables, notes, and this is why I say I won't be able to explain it in too much detail. If you click on something like notes and then you press OK, you can put it in Google Documents and then upload it. If you know a lot about CSV and this kind of stuff, then this is pretty awesome. At this point I don't, but I will eventually make another video on it. Hey, see? My note! What would Josh do in YouTube? My note's there. I don't know how to use this to its full advantage, and the developer's probably going to laugh at me, but there you go.